Nick, you are right now the number one ranked American polo player in the world, correct? Yes. And you spend your summer in the Hamptons playing as part of the Mercedes-Benz Challenge. I understand you literally started playing polo at three years old? Yeah, I mean, I started riding when I was probably three, four years old. How did your feet even reach the stirrups? I'm trying to I mean, <laughs> you know, I don't even think I used a saddle or stirrups. I think they sort of just threw me on a horse and, um, and I mean, you know, my, my father, you know, I grew up in a, in a, in a family, in a horse-oriented family, you know, my father used to play and his father used to play, so. Right, Raul, horse, right. Yeah, Raul, right. Um, so horses, so, you know, was sort of, they were around all the time and, you know, in, in, if, as you know, like in polo families, you know, they, they stick kids on horses that, you know, at, when, as, you know, before they can even walk. So I've been riding since I was, you know, a little baby, so. And you grew up in, uh, in Florida, correct? In Florida, right, correct. And uh, is, is there a real active polo community in Florida, around Wellington, is it? Yeah, or? I mean, Wellington is, is, we've got the biggest polo club in the United States. We host two of the biggest tournaments in the United States and probably in the top five in the world. So um, Wellington is a huge horse environment. Um, and we also have an equestrian side of it as well, and horse racing. So, I mean, between the months of December and April, there's a probably about between ten and 15,000 horses in Wellington. And so I, I'm assuming growing up, all your buddies were polo players too. No, that's the funny thing, is that, you know, I, I grew up, I went to school in Wellington, and none of my school friends played polo, nor even knew what polo was. I mean, I had uh, some friends in polo, but, you know, going to school, none of them, none of them played polo. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, it was something new for them to, to experience. Polo in the Hamptons has become quite the phenomenon here. You've been uh, quoted as saying, you know, you can't imagine a better place to be in the summer playing polo than being in the East End. The response to the Mercedes-Benz Challenge is, it has been great, and I think we were talking earlier and I noted the gallery the, the, where you pay by the carload as right. opposed to the VIP has really been increasing. Right, yeah, no, it has. I mean, I think in the, in the past five years, it's grown immensely. And I mean, even this year, I mean, the crowds, I think this year are bigger than they've ever been. It's out there, it's, it's becoming more mainstream, and I think it's attracting a lot more of the public, uh, which is great. Now, you play in a sport that uh, we can't normally on a Saturday turn on ESPN and find a polo no, match on no. TV. Do you see it going that direction, though? I mean, you, I think it is a sport that's growing, I and mean, there's few things out there that we can say we're not media overkilled on. Right. Polo is something new, and I think if public really does grab a hold of it, it's going to fly. I think, I, I mean, you know, I think what, 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 I, what I'm trying to do and what, you know, what Nacho, I'm sure you guys all know, is trying to do is, you know, is, is try to make the sport a little bit more mainstream. You know, nobody knows about it. You know, they don't know the rules. They don't know the, you know, what happens and, you know, what goes on in the sport. And I think, I think it's catching on. I think with, you know, with a lot of these events that, um, these small events like the Governor's Island, stuff like that, which sort of bring in people from, like, cities and stuff like that that have no idea about the sport and sort of give them a taste of what it's all about. It's a, it's a great spectator sport, and I think if everyone just gives it a chance, and I mean, you know, our dreams are, are for it to, at some point in the next five years, give or take, um, for it to get on ESPN, you know, to become more of a sport like all the other sports. It's perceived as, of course, a very rich man's sport, yet I found that the majority of major matches and tournaments are always there to benefit some cause mm -hmm. for those less fortunate. Mm -hmm. And that's important for us. Always, isn't it? always. I, I play about 10 or 15 charities uh, events a year. We're always trying to give back to the community, to give back to you know, more unfortunate kids and, and more unfortunate organizations. And I think it's, you know, that's, that's also a great, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great addition to, to, to the sport. You know, like the, the Governor's Island is, 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 is a great uh, charity, and I think they raised, I don't know how much money. But oh, millions, yeah, millions, yeah, millions, right, millions of dollars yeah. for it. So, um, but I think it's good. And there is a celebrity cachet to it, though. There is, isn't there? yeah, there is. And, but, but I mean, going back to the whole elite thing, uh, you know, right? People foresee that the sport is as an elite sort of rich kings, kings men sport. And I mean, it has its qualities, but it's you know, also us, all the prof like us professionals, we're all just normal people trying to make a living. You know, we're all, you know, we're, we we you know we travel around the world, you know, trying to, you know, it's it's, it's an expe expensive sport and. But it's also, it's, it's, it's actually quite easy to get into now because now there's lots of organizations and clubs that make it more accessible for people less unfortunate to, to have horses or who haven't grown up in a, family, in a polo oriented family. Right. And uh, so it's, it's more accessible for the public if they want to try to play, if they want to play. You get sponsorships as well, right. personal sponsorships. You right now, as Nacho's represented uh, Ralph Laurent, tell us about who uh, you well, are. Well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm the ambassador of, for Piaget. 
all, all these corporate sponsors, this is all new. You know, Polo is all—it's always been sort of under the radar, and and it's never been brought out by the corporate sponsors. But now, you know, with the help of you know Black Watch, Ralph Lauren, um, Piaget, and you know a lot of other companies, I think uh, there's a bit more attraction to it. And uh, you know, and I've been lucky to be able to jump on um, and and be part of the Piaget organization. Now you're 27, 27. handsome son of a gun. <laughs> you're living in the Hamptons, which in the summertime is of, uh, uh, of course, uh, a wonderful playground to be it's at between the beaches be. and the nightclubs. What is your evening like when you? I mean, you, I mean, look, it, dep it depends on my polo schedule, but you know, uh, you know, I'm like, you, you know, I mean, the Hamptons is is a great place to be. There's unbelievable restaurants, great bars, great nightclubs, good crowds. Um, I I can't really, I mean. I, the Hampton, I, 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 like I said, it's it's probably the best place to play in the summer. I mean, the weather's been unbelievable. Um, the polo's fun. You know, it's you know they throw great parties on Saturdays. Uh, the beaches are beautiful. I mean, there really isn't a downfall to being out here in the Hamptons. And and I'm going to be very sad to leave at the end of the season, but it's uh, I'm going to have to face the facts at some point. Now uh, the matches are every Saturday. Every Saturday, right? Correct. And uh, anyone can go. I think it's twenty dollars a carload on Saturday, polo, polo, so you can throw eight people right. in it. But you're explaining that there are actually matches during the week, right? Well, that people probably are not aware of. Well, that's that. I mean, polo is always open to the public. Always, there there isn't a time when polo. You, I mean, even you go to to, to to polo in Florida, which is a private polo club to IPC International Polo Club, um, it's still open to the public. You know, you, there's there's a there's a side where people can go and tailgate and watch in their stands and stuff like that. So it's always open to the public. What people don't know is that some here in the Hamptons, you know, everybody goes to the Saturday games and thinks it's that's the only game during the week. But it's not true. I mean, we're we're playing. We play two or three games a week. So, you know, a lot, a lot of teams are lucky to like. For instance, today, like we got luckily with the draw that we're going to play today on a Saturday. But we've all, we already played two games this week. And I think what we need to do is is, is probably give out some sort of a schedule. Um, to let the public know that there are other other games during the week, and it's open to the public. Anybody can come whenever they want. They just come, they bring their car with as many people as they want, and they can watch. So it's a pretty grueling regimen, actually. This isn't all just fun. Uh, well, no, it's fun not. games, but right. it's, but but you have to keep an obviously. No, of course, shape. I, I train four or five times a week. That's just tr physical training. Then I'm riding at least four or five times a week. I mean, it's 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 constant training. What's uh, what's next on the horizon for you? Obviously, the season's going to end here, both personal and professionally. Where do you go from here as far as polo goes? And what's happening uh, on, on a professional or personal level? My, my, my schedule you know, proceeds. I go to uh, Aiken, South Carolina for a month and a half where there's, a, there's two really big tournaments that are played out there. And so I've got two more weeks here, then I go to Aiken, then I go to Argentina for two months where we have a couple of the big tournaments there. So all the best pole players in the world, they sort of go there. And, uh, and we have some of the best pole in the world, if not the best pole in the world. And then back to Florida where our season starts, the, uh, starts there again. So. And Argentina really is the center of Ar polo, polo now is, in the world, yeah. and you're half Argentinian, half German, right? I'm 50% uh, I'm Argentine and 50% German and 100% are American. Yeah, well, no, I mean, you're American, but right. you know, back we're, we're, right. we're all Nazi. Right, well, I mean, I've, <laughs> I've, I've, yeah, exactly, so. But that Argentinian polo blood must be cours it's right. coursing through your veins, huh? <laughs> it's helped a little bit, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think so. I mean, it, look, the Argentines are the best polo players in the world, so. I guess it's, it's good to have that blood in you. And uh, we're going to see you next year, Prince Harry. That seems to be an event that's going to continue for. It's good. That's good. That's good. that'll continue as long as it can go. And so. uh, and I'm I'm happy to be a part of it. And you know, it's been an honor to be able to play with Harry. And and he's a great guy. And you know, I look forward to doing it again next year. Well, we're as thoroughbred racing as supposedly the sport of kings. We can uh, we can call Paul the sport, the sport of, princes, of princes, right? right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Nick, it was great talking to no, you. No, thank Thanks you so very much. much. For being Pleasure. Here today. No, thank you for having me. It's been an honor. Thank you.